ecological system and everything else. Uh, it just goes on and on. Uh, the primary routes of exposure, again, inhalation and possession of absorption. The general, the one thing that they told the leadership at the Pentagon they were very concerned with, and this is, quote, ingestion. And this is uh, from children playing and eating contaminated soil and contaminated drinking water and food in the community. So, uh, have you been speaking overseas? Like, are you doing any traveling? Well, um, ever since I was a director of depleted uranium project back in the 90s, and I did all the briefings within the Pentagon and within the military, uh, once I found out and realized uh, in 1997 that they were not going to comply with their own requirements and they were not going to provide medical care to anybody, uh, then I started speaking out all over, the, all over the country and all over the world. So, yes, I have. So, I Okay. Well, the um, the other clip, actually, it's uh, much shorter than that, but uh, uh, it's extremely important that we hear him. And then uh, we will come back to uh, continue with the program. Uh, Doug, I want to know, what about, I mean, the, the people that are making these weapons, are they in any way responsible for uh, this mess that we are in? Well, obviously, yes. Uh, but again, they're you know, they're made and manufactured by the U.S. military. They're you know Department of Defense uh, contractors. You know, as far back as 1981, uh, Aerojet that manufactures uranium munitions in Tennessee. They were seeing all the adverse health and environmental effects, all the serious adverse health health problems, in the employees of the plant at Aerojet. And, and 60 Minutes did a major story on it back in 1981 called On Strike for Their Lives, and we've continued ever since. Uh, we have a, country, a, a community called Concord, Massachusetts, and uh, you probably have learned your American history, but Concord, Massachusetts is where our nation was born on the 18th of April in 1775. Paul Revere and the Minuteman, you know, the British, and that community is totally trashed because of the, use, the manufacturing and testing of uranium munitions, horrible health effects in that, in that community. And today it's a super fun site where they're trying to get it cleaned up, but again, virtually you can't clean it up. Uh, so you have the problems all over. Again, it's, it's very, very simple. When you deliberately take thousands of tons of radioactive toxic materials, disperse it in the environment, knowing perfectly well that it contaminates air, water, and soil, that there virtually is no way to clean it up, and then you refuse to provide proper effective medical care, even though it's very limited in its effectiveness, you've created a problem, and it's wrong. It's simply wrong. Do you know if anyone is suing these manufacturers or the Department of Defense? You can't sue. That's what I was just explaining. Ferris Doctrine, you cannot sue. They are beyond the law. They are above all laws. The only thing we can do, and this is the reason why I wrote the regulations and the orders and the procedures to clean it up and mandate ensure medical care was provided, is that all you can do is basically go and ask them like a child asking a father to take care of me, please. And they have the choice to do it or not. I mean, you have to understand, today... Over 500,000 of our sons and daughters are affected from Gulf War illness and all the effects of combat in the last few years. That's from, that's from Gulf War One and Gulf War Two alone. We have hundreds of thousands affected from Agent Orange in the Vietnam era. And I got zapped by that originally. And the Department of Defense, the Department of Veteran Affairs has virtually walked away. And, and you, are, you said that our soldiers cannot sue. That's correct. They cannot sue anybody. Now, what That's about a, now? That was a brand new recent court decision with a federal court in New York uh, because the members of the 442nd U.S. Army National Guard unit from New York military police unit got all exposed and affected and are sick, children born with birth defects and the spouses affected. 
And so they tried to get medical care first in according with the orders and regulations, and they were denied. So then they went to federal court. And the decision was that Ferris is applicable and they, they can't sue. Now, the judge did rule that the improper and effective medical care provided by the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs physicians once they were discharged from the military, that they can sue on that grounds for uh, negligence. Now, the military has never denied that their own negligence. They just have absolved themselves of responsibility and all liability for their negligence. That's what Ferris does. What about people in other countries? Uh, do you know if any people in other countries are suing? How do you sue? I don't know. Go, go through the uh, international court? Well, I mean, we've had international court hearings and all that stuff in The Hague and all, all over the place, and they've ruled that this is illegal and that the individual should be held liable, but so what? Yeah, who's going to uh, enforce the uh, decision? Yeah, I mean, you know, with the, you know, when the President of the United States doesn't enforce our own laws and does all kinds of things illegal and found, you know, in violation of, you know, human rights by the U.S. Supreme Court, and nothing happens. You know, our liability, do, do, you, do we even have enough money in the country to cover our liability uh, uh, from, from no. this big mess that we're in? You couldn't even clean up the highway of death, which happened outside of Basra in Iraq from Gulf War I alone. It's virtually impossible. And, and see, this is the reason. Once we put all the reports together, we did all the analysis, we did all the research, we verified what needed to be done, we developed the procedures, and then we realized from firsthand experience that it can't be done. That's where I, as a senior Army officer, the director that completed the uranium project for the U.S. Army, told them they could no longer use it in combat. All right, um, that was uh, Doug Rocky. He was the uh, project director for the cleanup, the Pentagon cleanup project director after the uh, uh, Iraq-Kuwait incident. That was back in 1991, uh, 92. Well, we are not a pretty country like most of us would like to believe. It's rotten from within. And we think we are civilized. We think because we have a nice system of government, we have a pretty uh, nice style of living because we practically print our own money and no one is keeping us from not printing money out of nothing out of thin air, but yet we think we are nice people, we're the best on the earth, well, we're not. We're just a bully with a lot of guns and a lot of fire and power. We're doing it because we can and we could. And just like uh, Bill Clinton when he was asked, why did you do what you did with Monica Lewinsky? His answer was because I could and most of you do remember that. So we have the mentality, the, the American mentality, that we do it because we could. And uh, that's exactly, but that's not why uh, we did this thing in Iraq. We did this thing in Iraq because Israel wanted us to destroy the Arab armies around it. And as you know, the Arab army of Iraq was uh, like the fourth largest army in the world. They had about a one million man army, uh, very highly technological. Uh, you had like 5,000 Iraqi nuclear scientists when we invaded Iraq. And uh, so Iraq was a very highly technological country where people were living in peace and stability and uh, now Iraq is a war-torn country. Still, even after, you know, it's like we said, well, the people, they're fighting by themselves. You know, we left Iraq while they're still fighting. Well, guess what? Yeah, we are the cause of what is going on in Iraq now because we went and destroyed those, that country, destroyed the army that was keeping that country strong, destroyed the regime that was keeping the country together, 
And now Iraq is on the verge of splitting up into four different fighting war areas. Sectarian hate. At the time when we invaded, Shiites were marrying Sunnis, and Sunnis were marrying Shiites, and, and, uh, and Kurds were marrying Arabs, and Arabs were marrying Kurds. And now these people hate each other. Because that's exactly what was in the plan that Israel devised back in 1982 and said, that's how we are going to control these, how we are going to conquer these people. That's how we are going to destroy these people. Exactly what the United States had went and done. Now, why would the United States do that for Israel? Because Israel is who controls the United States foreign policy. Israel is who controls our politics. Israel wanted to destroy Iraq. What do you think how we are going to destroy Iraq? By taking them some flowers and some candy? No. By killing them like we did. By destroying the country like we did, using depleted uranium. That's what we have done. Don't talk to me about terrorists. Don't talk to me about Islamic terrorists. No. We created those two so we can continue with the program that Israel has devised. Where is the Libyan army? Billions of dollars were spent on the Libyan army. Where is it now? A bunch of gangs fighting on the streets of Tripoli? That's what Libya is? That's what the Arab Spring is? And we even went in there and killed Gaddafi for them. Because we said we want to spread democracy there. It was a big lie. You know, Anderson Cooper will get on CNN every night and, and, and all the lies, the poison that infected your brains with. And you were okay. You know, these leaders who have been over these countries with like, you know, okay, 40 years, 42 years. But his people were okay with it. It was a stable country. Of course, not everyone in the country was actually with Gaddafi, but Gaddafi had done a lot for his country. Saddam Hussein has done a lot for his country. And now, Egypt. What is going on in Egypt? Who caused that? We did. Because we spend millions of dollars to get the Egyptians hating each other. We spend billions of dollars. Now, who wants that? APAC, the American Israel Public Affairs Committee that is controlled by the Likud government of Israel. It has been all along. APAC is the same organization that JFK tried to actually end their influence in this country when it was called the American Zionist Council. He tried, him and his brother. They tried to eliminate the influence of the Israel lobby. You know, when I call it the Jewish influence, people say, no, 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 don't say the Jewish influence, say the Zionist influence. Well, you're not going to understand if we say the Zionist influence. It is the Jewish lobby in the United States. Very powerful lobby. Owns practically everyone in Congress, maybe one or two that are not owned by it. But controls the rest of them. Controls what goes on. We have interviewed on this program many, many US congressmen and senators. And the interviews are all over the internet and they told you who the Israel lobby is, who the Jewish lobby is. They told you how well it's organized and funded. As a politician, you do need money. You do need the media. They control the media. If you don't play by the ball, by their rules, you're gone. That's how they control it. And that's how they control you, because they control the media. Just think about what they were doing before the United States went and attacked 
Iraq, 